Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with Rolf Elmer aka Jam Elmar about the Storm Classic Time to Burn. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. Alright, here it is, the story behind Time to Burn by Storm, my interview with Jam Elmar. Enjoy! Storm was a project from German-based duo Jam Elmar and Mark Spoon, aka Jam and Spoon. In Music Express episode 126, I already did an interview with Rolf Elmer, aka Jam Elmar, about the Storm debut track Storm. For this episode I sat down with Rolf again, but now I asked him to share the story behind the Storm classic Time to Burn. In the summer of the year 2000, Time to Burn managed to reach the number 3 position of the UK singles chart which makes it the biggest hit for Storm. My first question to Rolf was if there was anything that did inspire them when they started to work on Time to Burn. Yes, there was this um, sample CD, I can't remember which one it was, uh, that had a few vocal samples on and uh, one of these uh, samples was uh, It's Time to Burn from this girl. I guess it was um, like a kinky girl or domina or something like this because there were other sentences that were, was clearly pointing to some mm -hmm. uh, special stuff yes <laughs> and uh, but we had this time to burn and uh, because I think it's also a nice idea about you know when you go clubbing and it, the, when you really want to ignite the party and it's time to burn I think that was yeah. a nice thing and Marcus agreed and uh, it took us actually a few weeks, I think, to find that riff. This bam 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 ba da ba ba, and uh, you know we we tried so many things, and uh, we were you know completely unhappy with it. And what can we do? And all of a sudden, I had this um, this uh, riff, and um, finally we had um, the core of the track. You know, this riff, the vocal, and the groove. And we built everything around and uh, put some samples on it. You know, Marco, Marco, Marcus was bringing his uh, records and he was doing some uh, samples of this, sample of that. And, uh, uh, you know, this banner, banner, mm -hmm. I think it's from a sample that can be also be found on a record from Underground Resistance. Jeff Mills was not too happy about this. <laughs> and we took uh, this, is, uh, this very famous sample, but, you know, uh, I think actually uh, Marcus told me that he actually called him and said, you know, <laughs> you can't do this. <laughs> yeah, you can't do this. You know, this is such a commercial bullshit record, you know, and uh, you're using this sample from Underground Resistance, not possible, you know. And uh, Mark Bonkspin said, you yeah, know, it's a sample, you know, what can you do? Mm. So um, I don't know. It, actually, I think uh, they made pe peace with each other about this, so um, there was no. Uh, you know, no, no bad vibes in the background finally and so uh, time to burn is what it is now. So yeah, you said it, it, it took a while to find like the right, the, like the turn, 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 but like how, how did you start with the track? Was it like you had the sample first or? Yeah, we had the sample first, that was the first thing we had. It was on this uh, sample CD and, uh, and we decided to build a track around this yeah. and uh, of course um, we didn't want it to come up with some mediocre track. We wanted to have something really, you know, strong. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, we actually always took a lot of effort to find something that was really catchy and uh, powerful. And uh, this is not like happening like every day you have an idea like this, you mm -hmm. know. Sometimes it happens. Maybe you ha if you have like a high, then, you know, ideas and melodies come. But sometimes you just um, you just have to go through <laughs> hell and try to find this um, uh, this music that you really need and yeah. you want to put together and uh, you know it's actually a very important process and you know when when you produce and when you uh, compose that you sort out everything that you don't need that you don't want mm -hmm. find finally 
eventually the core, the, the good thing, you know. But I know that some people are also, have, you know, are getting crazy because, you know, you spend days and days and days in the studio trying to find that little piece of gold, you know. And uh, you can record anything, you know. I can make a track in a couple of hours, you know, and, and make it finalize it but you know it will be like a filler you know just a mediocre thing and going to release and people will some maybe some people will enjoy but you want to have that strong track yeah. you know what you want to have like something that is um, you want to have something unique yeah exactly and uh, yeah and that sometimes you have to go through certain uh, process uh, to a, through a certain process uh, to until find the final result. Oh, I, I guess it was worth the wait, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it uh, was very, um, it was very successful in England. Uh, I think four weeks uh, top ten, which is uh, for a track like this, it was quite long. You know, mm -hmm. I think we hit number two or number three, mm -hmm. got a silver record. Yeah. At the back of that time, there was um, silver records for the very were given to the producers yeah. <laughs> in England, cool. yeah. yeah, that was nice. So yeah, Time to Burn is a lot faster and it also sounds more aggressive and, and energetic when I compare it to Storm. So was it also the plan from the start already? Um, not really. You know, um, as a musician or uh, as uh, some, uh, like a music worker, you don't really plan so much. At least we didn't. Maybe some other people are more considering where to go and what to do and uh, we did it at times and um, sometimes we you know if the beats are very high and they were very high at that time like beyond 140 bpm like now actually and um, yeah you don't want to really come up with something that's i don't know maybe 127 beats mm -hmm. unless the music uh, um, uh, calls for it so uh, we said okay to make it compatible with the with the dance floor, we decided to, to make a rough and fast tr track, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. So I guess Mark did test the track out not long after it was finished? Yes, yeah, sure. He always tested and uh, sometimes he came back and said, you know, we have to shorten this part or we have to, you know, make this part a little bit longer. And um, yeah, then we did a few changes. Yeah. And also uh, concerning the sound, um, sometimes we... Uh, changed little things here and there but mostly we we had like we were happy with the sound yeah. so, so do, you, do you remember his feedback uh, after he played this track for the first time not really no, no. not to be honest oh, I, I guess he was happy <laughs> yeah i remember another storm track that uh, we he played um at a club and we we uh, there was the guy guys from the record company who who didn't really like the track he said ah it's not commercial enough and Marcus said, no, no, it's commercial, you're gonna see. I'm gonna play it and you, you please go, come to the club and you will see how it works. And so he played it and uh, the people were going berserk. And, uh, and so Marcus said, you know, what can I say? You know, this is, uh, you, you saw the reactions of the people and they said, yeah, yeah, okay. It's, it's <laughs> and so they accepted it, but it never became a big hit. <laughs> which, which one was that? That was uh, Storm Animal. Oh, Storm Animal. Mm -hmm. I, I also like that one. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's uh, it's, yeah. A, it's a good track yeah. though, but it wasn't as big as yeah. Uh, yeah. Time to Burn. So yeah, do, do you remember some of the DJs that, that played the track back then? No. no. <laughs> but I think it was played by both trans DJs and, and techno DJs. Yeah, could be. Yeah, yeah. because it's uh, like at the edge of... I think German Spoon always was some, somewhere at the edge between uh, yeah. techno and trance, yeah. you know, and uh, this is sometimes a bit um, makes my life as a DJ sometimes a bit hard, not really hard, but uh, because um, I think it would be easier for the people to consider German Spoon as techno or, or as trance, but mm -hmm. we are somewhere in this... Like in, in the middle. In the inter... Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, in yeah. inter space of that. Yeah, yeah. And so... Um, but anyway, it is the w like the way it is. It is what it is. Yeah. On, and uh, in a way it's good, you know, that that we can't put into one yeah in a, in a box yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly so yeah you already said it like uh, time to burn became a pretty big hit and it made it to the number three position of the uk charts mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah which is pretty rare back then for yeah. uh, for like a techno track that hardly had any vocals mm -hmm. so w were you surprised that the, that the track did so well uh yes 
definitely. And um, the guy, um, this English uh, um, A&R guy, I can't remember his name, he was always very, very, he was talking very fast, so he, wa he was hard to follow and um, he was always very, uh, he was very cool. And he said, you know, oh, I just wanted to let you know that we are number three in the UK charts. And I was, wow, this is amazing! And I was jumping, I was in the train, I remember, in, I was uh, in the train, I was jumping up, yeah, this is cool. And the, the, for the first time I saw him, you know, I could hear his uh, happiness about <laughs> this. I was, yeah, oh, yes, it's really, really nice, you know. And <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really great. And uh, yeah. Yeah. was a great day yes yeah yeah for sure yeah <laughs> so yeah I, I think chart wise and with radio play time to burn was the most successful storm track is it also your favorite storm track mm, I, I for, you know my favorite i don't know but it, it's definitely one of uh, my go-to tracks when yeah. i play especially um when i play um retro sets and but uh, the other is i think the theme you know with uh, storm storm is m is more sophisticated mm -hmm. you know this hammering thing yeah. and the harmonics that, that it um, the the harmonic structure that it produces is really weird and but it works well so for some reason um, for some reason I found this crazy theme that I probably will never I uh, will never be able to do this something like this again but anyway it was really really great and uh, so, um, the storms uh, time to burn thing is rather simple because it's just a, a, a D minor chord, if you want. And uh, so, but the other one is really crazy. You know, it has this craziness yeah. to it. So, yeah. and uh, there was I have to say, I have to mention one thing: the other storm storm track almost didn't happen because Mark didn't really like the sound and the the crazy theme. He said, oh, this is terrible, so, you know, it uh, goes on my balls, you know, and it's really terrible. And, uh, and I have to say that the, um, the original sound was much, much more ext extreme, mm -hmm. like it is now, and like it became. And um, so we, were, we started working on something different, but uh, against my usual habit to erase everything that we didn't accept, I saved it. And I let it uh, on the on the disc, and uh, yeah, at that time it was discs, not hard disc, it was discs. And um, so um, after a few hours, Mark said, "This other thing yeah, that you had before, did you did you erase it?" And I said, "No, no, I still have it. I recall it, recall it." <laughs> and I was, uh, you know, and I said, "Yeah, it's good, it's good. It go let's work on this." So uh, it finally we recalled it and. Uh, tweaked the sound a little bit and um, yeah so it finally happened but um, there was a good chance that it never would have seen the light of the <laughs> yeah. world <laughs> oh, wow, wow. yeah so yeah um yeah time to burn also has a cool video clip where we see uh, marcus as the referee of a thai boxing game and you also <laughs> have a little role in the video as well can, can you tell a bit more about that video yeah the video yeah we we, we had this idea about uh Oh, well, maybe uh, was it us, or maybe it was the the the, um, the director? I can't remember who had this idea first place. But um, we, we finally we came up with this idea with this uh, female Thai boxing thing, and um, and the nice thing was that we had to uh, travel to Bangkok back mm -hmm. at that time. <laughs> uh, the record companies had so much money that you could say oh yeah we, we sent the guys to Bangkok and have a nice video and so also before that we had you know had took a day, few days off in Phuket and uh, yeah yeah and um, it was just great you know hanging out with Marcus and was it's, it's so was so much fun to travel with Marcus it's, it's very demanding because he's so crazy but it's also uh, fantastic you know yeah. because he uh, has so many ideas let's do this let's do that and because being him as a DJ, you know, he had, a, you know, always his pockets full of money and come on, let's do this, let's do that, and, you know, and uh, you got all the benefit from it. Mm -hmm. It was really great. And then finally, we, um, we, we were shooting the video in a Thai boxing school in, ba in the middle of nowhere in Bangkok. And um, there was this uh, 
two girls. And I, yeah, Marcus, um, he, he was boxing be be uh, before he was coming to music. He was actually doing oh, really? some sports. Oh. Yeah, so he, know, he knew well about boxing. And, uh, so, and, and he looked like the referee of... Uh, yeah. yeah. It looks yeah. very much like he could be uh, very authentic. And uh, I was the one who was betting on one mm -hmm. girl, you know, and I betted on the girl who was actually losing the fight. But uh, so it was really funny, you know, with all these um, Thai guys, you know, who also had to go like, rah, 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 yeah, hit her, hit her. <laughs> and uh, it was really funny that video. Um, I was thinking, I think it was Markus Sternberg. Was it Markus Sternberg? I don't know. Uh, anyway, the director. Um, it was just uh, a lot of fun. Yeah. So. So yeah, Time to Burn came out with remixes from uh, Mauro Picotto, uh, Nick Sentience, uh, Gizé and uh, the late Pascal Fios, for example. Uh, did you guys pick the remixes or was this something done by the record label? I think it was, Mar um, as far as I remember, always Marcus uh, determined the remixes. And uh, Pascal was a good friend and uh, Mauro Picotto as well. And uh, so he said, you know, um, uh, I want remixes from them and, uh, you know. And then it happened. <laughs> yeah, the record company would never, you know, say uh, something against this just to keep it peaceful. <laughs> they, had no, they had no choice. They had no choice, yeah, good decision. <laughs> so yeah, do, do you have a favorite version yourself? I think I like the original yeah. still most. Yeah. And, and, and if you have to pick a remix from someone else besides the original? Um, I would pick up the remix from the two re remixes who are actually working on the on the release now, now, right now, you know, because it's I think it's just released already by Black Hole Recordings, and um, I really like the Balthazar and Drag Rock remix, and also um, uh, the Fergie remix is fantastic. I think it's very groovy and. Uh, it's a completely different approach. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Balthazar and Jack Rock is very straightforward techno and uh, a real burner yeah. on, the on the floor. You, you also did, you did your own remix or not? Yeah, I did, yeah. 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 It's very, that's uh, uh, a very vicious remix. Mm -hmm. It uh, has very vicious sounds in it and it's really, is, is you it, know, it it's difficult? attacking. <laughs> is it difficult for you to remix your own tracks? It's very difficult, I think, yeah. and. Uh, I actually hate remixing. I hate remixing my old stuff, my, my own stuff, because um, at one point in your life you gave everything to make this track as perfect as possible, and then you had to reinvent the track. Mm -hmm. And um, I always thought uh, that this is just uh, absurd. You know, yeah. you can't really invent the same ideas for uh, for a second time. Yeah. And, but, but this time, you know, I just um, tried to, um, how would it sound, uh, how would it sound like in tw uh, 2022? Mm -hmm. And this was the result yeah. now. Yeah. So can, can we also expect more Storm remixes in the, in the near future? Mm, nothing planned, but why not? Sure, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I think the second release, uh, also this, uh, what is it called? Um, Hurricane? Hmm? Hurricane, yeah. yeah, Hurricane, Hurricane, is also, um, uh, I think it's a very potent and a very great track though. And uh, it was a little bit in the shadow of the first release, yeah. but I th when, I, when I listen to it, it's very groovy and has also this bite, you know, it's great. Yeah, it's kind of funny because Storm was pretty big and then Hurricane was, yeah. Okay, okay is it the typical second single, you yeah. know? Yeah. 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 yeah, too bad. So do you, do you think you can ever make new Storm tracks or is this something like this project is like closed? I had actually a lot of tracks that I wanted to re-release re uh, uh, under the uh, Storm brand. Mm -hmm. But uh, for, for some reason it never really happened. Maybe it's because I'm, um, uh, it was like, I don't know, maybe it was uh, some marketing decisions you know that mm -hmm. we didn't want to uh, mix it up with the current release now and i said oh i don't want to wait you know i just yeah. take it for myself yeah. and uh, but yes uh, i actually there was was a we, we we were actually um talking about this a long time for for a long time to uh, re uh revive the storm brand yeah I, th I think it might be a good idea 
Oh yeah, why not? Yeah, Pe people should <laughs> leave in the comments uh, what, what they think about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, thanks a lot for your time and good luck with everything. Thanks very much. All right, that was it. This week's vlog, the story behind Time to Burn by Storm, my interview with Rolf Elmer, AKA Jam Almar. Rolf, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, leave a comment in the comment section below, and very important, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. And in case you missed it, I did several other interviews with Jam Elmar. Those are all online already on my channel, so make sure to check them out. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.